Hello again and welcome back to a packed final score to this week. Coming up, we'll see if Cliftonville could move to within one point of a first league title for 15 years. We'll see what happened at the bottom of the table as Lisburn Distillery and Donegal Celtic went head to head. And we also have a fantastic goal of the month for March. Ten goals to choose from in that goal of the month. That's all coming up later. But we're going to start at Solitude. Crusaders knowing that they had to beat their North Belfast rivals if they had any chance of stopping the Reds lifting the title. It was a first be second title decider in this North Belfast derby at Solitude and Cliftonville had the better of the opening chances. Mark Smith saw this shot blocked by Crusaders Craig McLean. But the visitors drew first blood. Timmy Adamson nipping in to capitalise on a Cliftonville mistake to put Crusaders 1-0 ahead. Good work down the right-hand side from Joe Gormley gave Cliftonville's Liam Boyce the chance to draw the home side level, but Johan Lacroix was equal to his effort. But Boyce didn't have to wait long for his goal, the equaliser coming from this free kick, bringing the Cliftonville frontman's tally to 31 goals. Crusaders were not prepared to lie down. Connor Devlin was called upon to deny David McGowan. Just over a minute later, a Josh Robinson mistake at the back gave Barry Johnson the simplest of tasks to put Cliftonville 2-1 ahead. Cliftonville were moving the ball well, and after some neat passing from the home side, Stephen Garrett went through, only to see his shot saved by Lacroix. And Garrett was involved again. After weaving his way through the Crusaders' defence, his cross eventually found its way to Jamerd O'Carroll, but he was unable to beat the Crusaders' French goalkeeper. Cliftonville and Liam Boyce were not finished there. In stoppage time, Boyce had all the time and space to slot home his second goal, leaving the final score at Solitude 3-1. Tommy Breslin, they're singing their name behind you here in the stands. What an afternoon for you and for Cliftonville. The league now seems tr well and truly wrapped up. Well, yeah, you know, mathematically it's still not over, but, you know, we're, we're 14 points clear with five games to go, so it's very much in our hands. But, you know, we asked the players for a big push. At the, at the, at the, I didn't think we played that badly in the first half and gave away a soft goal. Asked for a big push in the second half and they come out and they restricted Crusaders to, to very little, considering the run that they've been on. And, you know, all credit to the Crusaders. You know, they came and they, they give it their all right to the end. But I thought, you know, we deserved it maybe over the, the, the run of the play, maybe a draw, but maybe we just did it. So just delighted to get three points and, and it moves us so much closer to where we want to be. Yes, it was a great game at Solitude. Um, we were both there and um, it was a funny sort of game for, for periods. Very entertaining game. But, but the first 15 minutes, I mean, Cliftonville were flying, they were looking good, they were in total control, uh, and, and Liam Boyce, uh, uh, for parts, looked absolutely unplayable. Unplayable is, is pretty much how I'd described him in, in that initial period, that first 15 minutes of the game where so much went through him. and he, He's such a dangerous player in that he, he comes off into the space, you know, sort of that number 10 position. And, and he comes off in there and he can link and he can create and he's obviously a goal threat as well. You look at the amount of goals he scored and in that 15 minute cameo there was everything. There was opportunities that, that, that he created for himself and others and uh, the only surprising thing was that, that Cliftonville didn't take the lead at that stage um, and who knows what it might have turned out had they taken the lead. We saw, I mean we're seeing examples of it and all, all the invention from Boyce that we've just seen and then the goal. Goals change matches and that's exactly what happened and, and Crusaders got the goal. <laughs> you're 100% you're right, goals change matches, you know, the momentum totally shifted, Crusaders suddenly looked an awful lot more comfortable in that first period, you were expecting a goal, you were waiting on a goal and the, the effect that it had on the Cliftonville players, um, most notably probably Boyce because mm. uh, he, he sort of uh, became a little bit isolated, wasn't as effective, didn't get on the ball as frustrated much. Frustrated a wee bit as well. And frustrated was the big thing, you know, because uh, he was so good in that period, he was probably thinking, this is going, I'm going to run this game today, you know, and, and uh, he eventually does. But uh, but they've a lot of, I mean, they've a lot of quality. I mean, we're seeing it here. I mean, you, you, Barry Johnson weighs in with what, what was a massive goal in the match because you know, Boyce has scored the free kick. Cliftonville are back in the game just after half time, having come from a goal down, a, a goal down and, and Barry Johnson takes advantage of some poor defending, but once Cliftonville 
got in front in the game, you didn't really see Crusaders coming back, did you? No, I mean it was it was wave after wave, and and, and the goal, the first, the free kick from Boyce changed the, the game so much. The goalkeeper should save it. He should save it. It's in the middle of the goal. It's a good strike, but I would have thought the goalkeeper should have saved it. Um, I'm sure he'll think that as well. But from there on in, it was a case of when Cliftonville scored the second one, and really when they scored another one, and, and probably they could have uh, had they scored the third goal with with more time remaining rather than the last kick of the match practically I, you could have seen them going on and scoring maybe another couple that man boy scores again he, he gets the third goal he, he has the final say what has tommy breslin done to get the best out of liam boyce i, I don't know i mean uh, it's probably a, a question that should be posed to both tommy and, and liam at some point you know because when he when he came back to Northern Ireland from from Werder Bremen last January, everybody expected he would really push on and replace Donnelly, who'd gone to Swansea, and that didn't really happen. And and, and uh, it's over pre-season that something's happened. He, he he's been a key player for them this year. I, I've sort of looked at it and, and I feel that the Devlin and and Boyce have been the key players this year. Devlin really went in as the number one and secured that position and gave them something, a foundation to build on. And Boyce at the other end, has, you know, not only the goals, uh, the amount of goals that he sets up uh, and the uh, um, the amount of work that he does on the ball to create things for other people. So And his goal celebrations. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> obviously from a fun aspect, but he, he's been he's been so good this year. At t like 15 minutes on Saturday, that first 15 minutes, he was unplayable, and uh, you just wonder can, can he can he you know can he get a move and, and can he recreate that sort of form, uh, maybe at a higher level of football. It all leaves Cliftonville 14 points clear, uh, five games to go for them and Crusaders. So. Uh, I don't think they're going to be caught. I think they'll get that point that they need. The goal difference is, is of uh, such an advantage that um, they wouldn't be caught in goal difference. One point will be enough now for Cliftonville uh, to secure that league title. Um, before we look at the rest of Tuesday's games, we need to go back to Saturday, don't we? Lots of matches, lots of goals. Cliftonville and Crusaders scoring five apiece. Cliftonville were just too hot to handle for Ballymena on Saturday. So hot that opening goal scorer Liam Boyce had to cool down. Ronan Scannell added the red second in the first half. Stephen Garrett latched on to a perfectly timed Barry Johnston ball to make it three. Boyce then turned provider as Caldwell headed in his cross. And it was Boyce who wrapped the game up, sliding in to score his second and Cliftonville's fifth. Over in East Belfast, there were five goals in the first half. Chris Morrow headed in the first. Then after a defensive lapse from Glen Torren, Timmy Adamson found the net. And minutes later, he scored his second. But Andy Waterworth gave the home support something to cheer, heading in from close range. Richard Clark curled in the Glen second just before half time. And they equalised 